my birthday. Uh, 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 uh. It's my birthday. Uh. Welcome, welcome to my celebration. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for 30, 47 years. I wish it was 30 so. Woo! But I am so excited on today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. The Lord has blessed me with life to be able to have this time, 47 years, and he has blessed us on today, New Hope Fellowship Tabernacle Church. We have an awesome preacher on today, and I'm so excited to have our Bishop Cameron Gresham here with us today. This awesome man of God has decided to come and be a blessing to my life. I hope that he's a blessing to yours. This is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be excited and be happy about it. Listen, I don't know if you're happy, but I'm happy because God did it. He did it. My mom and dad died at 37 and 44. I have lived longer than both of them. So I'm excited on today that he has given me life. He has given me years. And I hope, I hope that you can rejoice with me because the scriptures talk about let us rejoice together. So on today. At this moment, at this time, I want you to put up all the hearts, the likes, like, share, tell somebody that the man of God is getting ready to bring a word. And I hope that you are blessed on today because I'm looking for my blessing in the word of God. I'll see you after the preacher. Peace. Well, this is the day the Lord has made, and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Can I engage you and invoke you to put your hands together and bless the Lord wherever you are, in the comfort of your home, in your car, on your job, for the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised, and we bless his name tonight. It is a joy for us to be afforded this opportunity of worship amen with you on today let me set protocol and honor the great leaders amen of the new hope fellowship tabernacle church we honor pastor stacy kazan and of course to the great man of god whom we are celebrating today amen pastor harry kazan happy birthday man of god our prayer for you is that god will let you live as long as you want to live and never want for anything as long as you live and to all of the reverend clergy and the people of God that join us here, there, and everywhere, praise the Lord, everybody, but everybody ought to praise the Lord. Jesus, you brought me all the way, and you carry my burdens every day. You're such a wonderful Savior, and I've never known you to fail. Jesus, you brought me all, all the way. One more time for me. Jesus, you brought me all the way yes lord did he bring you and he carried my burdens every day he's such a wonderful savior and i've never known you to fail Jesus you brought me all clap your hands and say all the way hallelujah the word of the Lord on this evening as we are celebrating God on this your birthday Acts chapter number 28 and I want to read verses number 3 
through verse number five in your hearing again. That is the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter number 28 and verse number three through five. And the word of the Lord says, and when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer whom though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Let me say that again. That latter clause says, and he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. I want to preach just for the next several moments with the aid of the Holy Ghost. And I want to talk to you, Pastor Kassan, and all of those of you that will hear my voice. I want to talk to you from the subject, I'm alive because there's more. Will you put that in the chats or tell somebody close to you in your vicinity, I'm alive because there is more. I am alive because there is more. As a man of God and a servant leader, I've always been one who desired to give God my very best. I've always worked hard to do the things that I felt would bring honor and glory to God. And so with my passion for excellence in ministry, it was always and still my present desire to listen. And I always found joy in learning from the experiences of those who have preceded me in the ministry. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul, who pins the book uh, uh, of Corinthians 1 Corinthians chapter number 11 and verse 1, he says, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. And this short clause is short but yet powerful in meaning because the apostle, through this penmanship, is conveying two important lessons to the reader. Lesson number one is that when we are in doubt or perhaps are in question of what to do or how to live or how to walk out the word of God, when we have those question marks in our lives, he tells us that there are still vessels of honor that remain in the earth that have the blueprints of heaven that are being followed. And so because of that, I found it informative and interesting to watch the documentaries of those of who consider our considered to be our mothers and fathers of the faith, those who have made monumental impacts into the kingdom of God. And listening to the stories of those whom we consider to be successful in ministry. And as I've listened to them, what I learned moreover is that through their success stories, that there is a place of years of extensive suffering and process. Their stories have denoted to us that they did not wake up one day and simply be or become what they were, but they went through things in their lives that processed them, that caused them to be who they are. Are When we listen at the documentaries and the success stories and we listen at the historicity of people like William J. Seymour, who was one of the pioneers in the Azusa Street Revival. When we listen at those uh, like Bishop William Fuller, who is the founder of the Fire Baptized Holiness Church of God of the Americas, Bishop Charles H. Mason, founder of 
of the church of God in Christ, we will find out that these were men, these were persons who some of them were born to families that were stricken with poverty. Many of them went through and battled depression. All of them went through dealing with racial and racism, their buildings and worships, their sanctuaries. Some of them were bombed and some of them were destroyed. Many of them went through divorces and they battled through many things, but the inward result was through their sufferings and through their pains and through their afflictions that God produced out of them some of the largest uh, African American organizations throughout the world. What am I saying to you today, people of God? I'm saying to you that where there is no challenge, there will be no growth. I dare you to tell somebody and put that in the chat tonight that where there is no challenge, there will be no growth. And where there is no pain, there will be no gain. And where there is not a crushing, Holy Ghost, I hear you, where there is no crushing, there will be no oil. I'm glad that the saints of old taught us that this is an uphill journey and that in order for us to become what God wants us to be, be, he has to process us. I remember that one of the songs of old was please be patient with me. Uh -huh. Albertina Walker said I need you to be patient with me because God is not through with me yet but when the Lord gets finished with me I shall come forth as pure gold I will be what he wants me to be I want to encourage some people today not to be envious and not to be upset because of the mode of transportation that God has utilized to get you where he wants you to be but I want you to respect the process because it's the process that God is taking you through it is the process that he is bringing you through that is molding you and making you and fashioning us into who God desires for us to be Lord don't take me off of the potter's wheel I, but I want you to fashion me I want you to keep working on me until I become exactly who you want me to be I hear Paul say in 2 Timothy chapter number 2 and verse number 12 he says if we suffer I dare somebody to shout suffer uh huh if we suffer we shall also also reign with him see we've got people that want to reign but very few of us want to suffer but if we will suffer with him then we shall reign with him what are you saying apostle he is telling us that if you can worship through tears if you can praise me when things are not going the way that you think that they should go if you can glorify my name through trials and through tribulations if you can still worship me when your back is up against the wall and you don't understand his plan for your life and you can't even see his hand if you can still give me glory and learn how how David said and to bless the Lord at all times and let his praises continuously be in your mouth he says if you will learn how to suffer with me he says then there is a seat of power that he will set you in and then you will be able to reign not the R-A-I-N but he says you will be able to R-E-I-G-N you will be able to reign in power and in splendor with me. I dare somebody wherever you are to clap your hands and thank God that your suffering was not in vain but that every tear you've had to cry, everything you've had to go through, it was for a purpose and a greater reason.
Hallelujah. And so when we look at success, we understand that success doesn't come in how well you do when you have all of the pieces to your puzzle. Uh, but rather how well you can operate and how well you can function in the face of adversity oh, hallelujah when we look at somebody like bishop mason who built one of the largest black churches in the world he built it during world war ii and he built it when steel was at a at, 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 at you couldn't hardly find it he built it during the time when people didn't really have money but when the favor of God is on your life he will cause you to do more with less hallelujah he will cause you to accomplish great exploits even when the odds are against you pastor Kason I believe that your life is a testimony I don't know your full story but I believe that your life is a testimony of how a individual can succeed even when things are against you that's when the church comes forth the church comes forth and we are identified because we have power with God and we are known because of not what we have in the power of our hands but we live our lives every day because the word tells us it's not by power hallelujah and neither is it by might but it is by his spirit saith the Lord and so here Paul is and in our text today the apostle Paul shows us how you can be effective even while you are being affected the apostle Paul shows us on how you can be a, a great and mighty through the power of God Paul shows us that even when we get to places in our lives where we feel as though we have been through everything that you could possibly imagine, Paul says to us that there is still another place of testing. Paul has been given the commission that I need you to go to Rome. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, neighbor, we've got to go to Rome. Can I tell somebody that there is greater that is in store for your life? And whenever you have a commission from God, that's when the enemy comes at you with everything that he can attack you with most of us today can testify that yes I was in the world yes I was in games yes I was in the club but my greatest battle was not in the streets my greatest battle was not in the club my greatest battle my greatest battle was not out there but my greatest battle was after I said I surrendered my all to you Jesus and when I came out of the world and I came into the church that's when the fight began when I stepped away from everything that was familiar to me and I came on the Lord's side that's when the battle began Paul says to us I was the chiefest of sinners I persecuted the church I was the one that persecuted the preachers I was the one that 
beat the disciples. But Paul said, my greatest battle came after I had an encounter and I was not from my beast. That's when I got into the greatest battle is when I said, Lord, I'm here to work for you. Lord, I'm here and I'm here to do whatever you say do. Somebody say yes, Lord. And so Paul says, when he gets the commission, I need you to go to Rome. The Bible says in chapter number 27, in his commission, he's on the ship and a storm arose and the Bible says that Paul said to those that were on the ship with him this storm is coming it's going to hit us at Melita and the Bible says that he told them the only way for us to survive is that you're going to have to grab a hold of a portion of the ship we're going to be hit by a storm but no life will be claimed yeah. can I tell somebody that you might be in a storm now but I hear the Holy Ghost say to tell you that no life shall be claimed the devil can't kill you because God's anointed me to live and you shall live and not die and to declare the works of the Lord and the Bible says that when the storm arose they make it to shore because they grab a hold of a portion of the ship that was torn into pieces how many of you know what it feels like for everything around you to be torn into pieces but yet God kept me together Yay, Jesus they make it to shore and after they get to the shore the battle is still not over chapter number 28 says after they make it to shore Paul comes out of a storm and the Bible says that he's picking up sticks to make a fire. Pastor K. Son, and those of you that are hearing me, Paul lets us know that we never get to a place where we don't have to serve. He lets us know that even though I've been shipwrecked, I've been beaten but I still can't sit down Paul is gathering sticks to build a fire so that he can make everybody else warm oh God and while he is putting these sticks on the fire the Bible says that a viper comes out of the fire and it fastens onto his head and the text says I gotta quit here but the text says that when the viper comes out and fastens to his hand the Bible says that Paul shakes the viper off into the fire and the Bible says that the people that he was trying to get warm and the people that he had built the fire for so that they could cook and feed them were the very people that expected him to swell and die but the Bible says that when they looked at him and saw that he was not affected by what afflicted him the Bible says they said among themselves that he must be of God and the Bible says that when he shook it off into the fire 
I want you to catch something here, Pastor. The snake caught to his head. I believe tonight, as I come to a close, that the reason why that the snake couldn't affect him, the venomous viper could not stop him, is because he had two assignments. One was, I got to get to Rome. Number two, verse number eight says that when the father of Publius was sick with a fever and of a bloody, the Bible says Paul entered in and he prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. And I believe that the same hand that was bitten by the viper is the same hand that he laid and healed the man that was sick and I came to tell you that you are alive because there's more and everything that the enemy tried to use to stop you and to block you it's the very thing that God's going to use to bring forth his glory the same thing that God the enemy tried to use against you is the very thing that God's going to use to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover the very thing that the enemies tried to afflict many of you I gotta quit right here but many of you have been afflicted in your bodies can I tell you that your affliction is because there's an anointing of healing that's on your life and God's gonna use it for you to heal others of their sickness and their diseases I dare you to clap your hands real fast and shout I thank God that I'm alive because there's more there's more to me than what meets the eyes and yet eyes have not seen ears have not heard and it hasn't even entered into the hearts of man the thing that God has in store for us if you think you've seen me you ain't seen nothing yet because they that know their God Shia, shall do great exploits and so man of God I say to you tonight be encouraged. The enemy's tried to kill you every day. Oh yeah. He's tried to stop you every day of your life. Why? Because there's an assignment that God has placed over you. And there's ministry that he has placed in your hands. Seeing that we have this ministry as we have received of God. We faint not. I say to you, sir, continue to drive the nail. Pursue and recover all. I say to you, man of God, as the word declares, that your eyes have not seen and your ears have not heard. It hasn't even entered into your heart the things that God has in store for you. You have survived every test of time, every storm and rain, every sickness and pain. Hallelujah. The enemy could not stop you. He didn't have the power or the authority to block you. And you have survived to tell the story that there is more. And I say to you today, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you, sir. And may the Lord grant you peace. You are alive because there is more. Will you lift your hands all over this place, wherever you are? Will you lift your hands? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We thank you for every desert. We thank you for every valley. 
Thank you for every hill we've had to climb and every valley that we've had to tunnel through. We thank you for the hard places, the rough places. It was good for us that we were afflicted. Oh, God, because that's how we know you. We know you in the fellowship of your sufferings and in the power of your resurrection. We thank you for our sufferings. If we could change anything, we would not change a thing. Because everything in our lives, it fashioned us and it built us to become who we are. And now we are the evidence, hallelujah. We are testaments of your glory. We are witnesses of your miraculous and wondrous working power. Now God, I pray for Pastor Kason in the name of Jesus. Thank you for this birthday. I pray now in Jesus' name that you open doors that no man can shut. Thank you for access that's been granted and given. I thank you that everything that you have ordained before the foundations of the world, I thank you that your answers are yea and amen. Thank you that the time is now. This is the acceptable time, hallelujah, to pursue and recover. And we bless you for it. I pray, Lord, that you would bless him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. And that everything that his hands would touch, I pray you bless it. Do it. And we'll tell you thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Clap your hands and give God praise and celebrate the fact that I am alive because there's more. Yay! What an awesome service on this morning, this afternoon. And we want to thank Bishop Gresham and each and every one of you for helping us to celebrate Pastor Harry on today. And we never want to close out a service without offering you the opportunity to get to know Jesus to offer you salvation. And it's something as simple as saying, Father, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe that you died and you rose again. I ask that you will forgive me of all of my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Something as simple as that. And if you don't have a church home, if you don't believe, go to a Bible-believing church. We offer you the right hand of fellowship right here at New Hope FTC. If you don't have a pastor, you need a pastor, you want a pastor, here's a pastor, here's a pastor. <laughs> if we want to pastor you, come join New Hope FT yes, Fellowship in, Tabernacle Church. And we will make you feel like somebody loves you. And on today... Why don't you be a blessing? I'm not just saying to me because it's my birthday. <laughs> but I'm saying be a blessing to the man of God. He brought forth such a powerful word on today. Not just about my life, but how you can take it in for yours. Amen. And I want you on today to help me be able to bless the man of God. Because the scripture says a prophet is due his high. And I want you to help me be able to bless this prophet on today. You will see all the ways of giving that will come in behind us. And please, and if you decide you want to be a blessing to me, <laughs> put it in, you know, the cash app, the Zelle, whatever it is, and say, that's what Pastor Harry. Well, we'll throw your information up on the screen. Yes, so yes, we'll that yes. It's capital P, capital H-L-C, Roman numeral 2. If you want to be a blessing to me. We thank you on today for taking out this time during your day to come and celebrate. All my family and friends, I appreciate you, you, and especially you for getting on today and to celebrate with me on today. I've been celebrating since last Friday. <laughs> all weekend long. The so. whole month, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and we love you all. And we pray that God will bless you. And we pray that God will double everything that you have given on today and that your life will be better after this service. 
Amen. You want to dismiss us, Pastor? Now, Father, we thank you for the word that came forth on today. We thank you for the life of Pastor Harry. We thank you for each and every one under the sound of my voice that you will continue to bless them, to keep them, and never, ever let us depart from your presence as we depart from this service. In the unmatchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. And always remember, there's hope. And new hope. God bless. Peace.